Hi. So ferrite is a pretty important material in electronics, both in motors, transformers, and plenty of other applications. Uh, because if we just wrap a coil around, say, pure iron, we'll see that with direct current, it generates a very powerful magnetic field. But with alternating current, we see that the field gets weaker the higher frequency we use. This is due to Lenz's law. Uh, I made a video demonstrating that. Uh, basically, the alternating current induces eddy currents into the iron, uh, and those eddy currents oppose the forming magnetic field. So we need a stator uh, or a core that can form magnetic fields but doesn't form eddy currents. Um, you can do that uh, a lot of times by, I'm not sure if you can see this, by using steel laminations. This is basically multiple sheet, there you go, multiple sheets of steel lined up on each other. But that proves to be pretty difficult for uh, DIY projects. Um, so you can also try to suspend uh, iron powder in a medium. Uh, this is referred to as ferrite. So this is what you see a lot of transformers wrapped around, like high frequency transformers, for example. Um, my initial exploration into uh, ferrite type devices, uh, I tried using iron infused PLA. Um, it makes for really pretty parts actually. I, it, it, it's nice and it's magnetic as you can see here. Uh, but it's, um, like, it's magnetic permeability is not very high. You can see that in Great Scott's video where he um, tries to 3D print brushless motors. Uh, now, since you can't find any companies that make custom ferrite parts, uh, I, I decided to try to do it myself. Um, I tried mixing polyester resin with magnetite powder to pour it into molds, to mold my parts. Uh, and I had uh, some, some failures along the way, but with some trial and error, I found that you could heat the, uh, the resin on like a stove or something and it would make it more viscous. It would also allow it to accept more powder and then you could pour it into a mold. Um, and that is I, how I made this stator right here. You could also, instead of pouring it into a mold, you could just press like a, a 3D printed like cookie cutter type shape into the resin. Um, that requires, uh, after you do that, you need to take it, uh, take that and put it in the oven to melt the plastic away and then you'll have the, the leftover part. That's actually, that's the, how I made this one. I didn't pour it, um, but pouring works as well. Now, uh, I, I ran into a problem though, trying to get higher iron concentrations. So uh, this is maybe about, it's between 50 and 70% iron powder. Um, I found that to get higher concentrations, like I wanted to go for 80%, you needed a very high temperature to make the resin uh, runny enough to accept all that powder. But as soon as you put the catalyst into the resin, because of the high temperature, it instantly uh, cures and you're left with globs of uh, ferrite material uh, because the heat accelerates the, the catalyzation process. Um, now, uh, since 80% seems to more or less be the upper limit of like how pure I can make these ferrite parts, at least for now, I figured I would take one of those uh, globs and machine it down into a test piece to compare it to regular ferrite. <laughs> So after reshaping the chunk of ferrite that I had, I got a similarly sized piece of real ferrite as well as a steel bolt, and I wrapped 50 turns of copper wire around each one. Uh, I then used an LC meter to measure each one's inductance, and I put 2 amps of DC current through each one to measure the magnetic field with my Tesla meter. Um, I also did this with a uh, 50 turns of copper wire with no core, just to see the inductance of that one as well. So looking at our results, we see that the air core has 18 uh, microhenries of inductance. And then moving down, the steel core has 14.2 microhenries of inductance, which uh, is unsurprising because the, as I said, alternating current forms eddy currents within the steel and it interferes. Um, though the steel did generate the strongest uh, field 
in with direct current. Moving down, we see that the real ferret has significantly better inductance uh, and generates a, a, a decent field, but not as good as a steel. And then moving down again, we see the homemade ferrite uh, quite a bit better than the steel, uh, though not nearly as good as the real ferrite. And it generates 11 milliteslas of field strength. So it's certainly still usable. Though I'd like to point out that this is using, um, I believe it's a 75 to 80% mix. It's hard to be sure of the exact content. But if you look at, say, the uh, electromagnetic permeability of iron that is 99.5% pure and then 99.9% .9 pure, that 99.9% .9 pure is significantly higher than the 995 Uh So it, it looks like small increases in the iron powder content will vastly improve our inductance. Uh, so I will be sure to work on that in the future. Anyways, I hope you found that informative and or useful. Uh, I am working on a method to use solvents to, uh, to thin the resin so that it can accept a more iron powder. Uh, and so that's easier to cast. Uh, so I will be posting a video of that shortly. Um, anyways, have a good day.